Hi, welcome to Teapot Genies. Today we're in Sydney Harbour. It's hard to imagine that this is where our Irish ancestors would have arrived many years ago. Imagine how they felt, those poor people leaving Ireland, the cold and the wet, hungry, raining, to come to this beautiful, beautiful blue skies. It's not even summer, it's fantastic. Yeah, that's right. I'm really grateful that they all came. <laughs> After talking to Tom Power on the Irish Famine Orphan Show, Wendy and I were inspired to go to Ireland separately to do a bit of family research and make a few shows for Teapot Genies. Our first one is with the Dean of Orsry in Kilkenny. When we arrived, he was about to perform a marriage ceremony, but he agreed to do the interview and I think he was more interested in doing the interview than performing the marriage ceremony. <laughs> we had fun making the show and I hope you enjoy it. Right now we're at the Church of Ireland in Kilkenny, Ireland and we're going to talk to the very Reverend Norman Linus, Dean of Orsry. Well Kay, it's like this, we have quite a number of visitors every year looking uh, for their ancestors, trying to trace their roots from Australia, from America, from Canada and they come with the assumption that all the records they're going to see are in fact accurate. That is simply not the case because it depended where you were and what local customs prevailed. For example, here in Kilkenny, up to 1870, the Church of Ireland was the established church. And whilst it has records, those records only pertain to those who were Anglican. And therefore, uh, even then, when they were being written up, they weren't always put down meticulously by the local cleric on the day the event happened. We would have records, for example, that simply record many years later uh, what a previous cleric had done. So that a successor came in and suddenly had to find out who was baptised, who was married and who had been buried in the previous years. So some of the records represent an oral tradition rather than an accurate, painstaking um, record of the event on the day. And a lot of people make uh, the assumption that the records are indeed that accurate and I would say therefore that when they come to trace routes there is a sense in which a lot of cross-referencing and detective work has to be done and also since we're on church grounds a leap of faith has to be taken particularly when tracing say from grandparent to grandchild there may be a gap with the parents also here in Ireland regrettably as a result of civil war a lot of the records went up in the Four Courts Fire, so there are huge gaps in records. And it, you, in Ireland you would be doing well to get records as early as the 18th century, and after that everything is a bonus. And what are some of the common mistakes that are made by people doing their family research? People have to remember that the notion of standard English is an invention of the 20th century. So when it comes to tracing names, names do not necessarily have a common way of being spelt. Uh, Smith, for example, a common example, can be spelt S-M-I-T-H, S-M-Y-T-H, S-M-Y-T-H-E. And even though they're, they're much older, these records, it could be the same John Smith they're talking about. Yes. But there isn't a standard spelling for certain names. Mm -hmm. And therefore, people have to be very careful, particularly when they're, the records, say, go back to the 18th century, that the name that appears is in fact, it, um, it may not be spelt the way we spell it today, but it could well be the ancestor that they're looking for, even though they don't recognize it, because they're assuming that the name has been spelt consistently the whole way through the, the, the ages. That's simply not the case either. People will be looking, say, for a name like Maureen McGrath. What the record will say is the widow McGrath. Okay. Also, a lot of records will indicate a simple X the mark of Jane Doe, because not everybody could read and write in former times, and particularly those who were the servants to the great houses, uh, invariably they were illiterate. Mm -hmm. And we have records here showing that. Um, also, uh, when people come to look at uh, their ancestors, they might, well, what did they do? And sometimes the record indicates what they were. Um, for example, here uh, we have everything from occupation, 
gentleman to housemaid mm -hmm. and everything in between. And it just, it's an interesting sidelight uh, in terms of the social history that it provides for uh, giving an insight into what, how people live their lives. Uh, for example, behind this church is what would be known as the Evans Asylum. Now the word asylum in a former age simply meant a place of healing and safety. We tend to think of the word asylum as having connotations of being mentally disturbed. That's simply not the case. Have the headstones in the graveyard been transcribed? This graveyard hasn't. The uh, one in St Canis's has, mm -hmm. which is the cathedral church here in Kilkenny. Mm -hmm. uh, but that wouldn't be the case everywhere. No. And also to make the point that when people search church records, I make the, 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 the plea, well what people are getting are baptisms, marriages and funerals. Not the date of birth and not the date of the death, but the date of the baptism and the date of the funeral. So certain dates of death can be weeks, months after the actual uh, thing occurred. And baptisms could be years after? Could be several years, yes mm. indeed. Mm. But when they come to Ireland um, and go to the reputable uh, record places such as the uh, representative church body library mm. uh, in Dublin at Braemore Park, and the, the archivist there is Dr Raymond Rafost, and quite a number of Church of Ireland records are kept there. Mm -hmm. uh, what is kept locally might be a computer printout uh, representing the original record, but if people want to see the originals, they either ask the local rector mm -hmm. or they go to the RCB library in Braemore Park in mm -hmm. Dublin. So most of them are kept in Dublin? The vast majority now are kept mm -hmm. in Dublin rather than locally. How old is the church? The church here was built in 1817, so in fact this was Kilkenny's first hospital. And it really housed the leper colony of Kilkenny and in medieval period leprosy was any skin disorder or even a hair lip and you had to live with the colony here. Well thank you very much Dean. My pleasure Kay. Hopefully we'll see you again one day. <laughs> I hope so. Thank you. Well, that was certainly an informative little talk with the Dean of All Three. Maybe the people of Kilkenny would like to come and transcribe these cemeteries so that the people in Australia can have access to them.